In this video, which will probably be one of the shortest in my entire catalog, I want to demonstrate Response Body in Spring Boot. Here's a controller class we've been working with so far in this video series, and I've just pushed and committed to, or committed and pushed to GitHub so that we can start from a point where you can easily see the differences I'm about to make. Take a look at this controller class's read method. What we're saying here is that if a user goes to slash start after, say, our domain name, IP address, port, all that stuff, using the method get, which typically would be a browser, uh, then we're going to call this read method. We're going to get a specimen DTO object, and then we're going to return a string called start. The string called start goes to this start HTML page, and it simply renders that page. So remember a couple of words here, maybe welcome to plant places or your specimen ID. And what you see here is welcome to plant places and your specimen ID is. If I control you, you see this is a legitimate HTML page. So that's life without response body. Now, what response body does is it says, okay, I want to change what this method is doing. By default, it's returning a string and that string is going to match up to some kind of template, some kind of HTML file. But what if I don't want to match up to a template? What if I want to return an object? That's where at response body comes from. And so I put at response body, you might need to import that as long as you have dependencies set up in your palm and, and you're up to date, it shouldn't be a problem for Eclipse to find it. Now, what response body lets me do is I can change the return type from string to something else. And something else might be what I have on line 30, which is specimen DTO. So I'm saying, no, I don't want to pick a template. I just want to give you an object back. So we take this and of course we have to make our return statement match the return type. So we're simply going to return this specimen DTO object just like so. I'll save and it will likely prompt me to restart, which I'll do right now. While that's restarting, let's go back and take a look at what was returned before. So you see this is what was returned before as the specimen, a beautiful Eastern Redbud, and it's returned as a human readable text. Now, let's go ahead. I'm going to just make sure that it restarted, which it did. Let's now see what happens now that I've said response body. Uh, we know it's not going to return this HTML template, so what is it going to return? We paste, and holy smokes, take a look at that. What does that look like? If you're familiar with syntax these days, you'll quickly recognize that that's a JSON syntax. So what response body has done is it has returned an object and Spring Boot's default behavior then is to take that object, interrogate it. In other words, look at its properties, parse those properties and their values into a JSON format. So if you see here, specimen ID, latitude, longitude, description. Let's take a look at this specimen DTO and we should see some things that look familiar. Specimen ID, latitude, longitude, and description. And if we take a look at our controller, we know we're doing some kind of uh, fetch here where we are essentially, let me just step into this a little bit. We're doing some kind of fetch here where we're just kind of mocking up some dummy data. Uh, but sure enough, the specimen ID 43, the latitude 3974, longitude 8451, and description a beautiful Eastern Redbud. We're putting that all into one concrete DTO. And then we see that those values along with the names they belong to output here in the uh, in the JSON output. As a matter of fact, take a look at what happens when we make this request using Postman and we can look a little more at the underbelly. Uh, you'll see that we have essentially raw JSON data sitting here. So click like so, we see the JSON data or formatted looks like so. More interesting though, take a look at the headers and you notice that the content type is application JSON. So it has figured a lot of this stuff out for us and it's prepared the response to be appropriate for the data that we're sending back. So that's a quick look at response body and Spring Boot and kind of read between the lines here. You see with response body, with the default behavior being to produce JSON, it's a really quick and easy way to produce JSON from a stream of objects. So I hope this video has been helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.